So in a recent uh, article that came out in uh, Quaternary International, which is one of the journals that I regularly like to read, uh, an investigator by the name of Pat Shipman, this came out in 2015, Quaternary International deals with any events having to do with the Quaternary, which was basically from 2.6 million years ago until today. So the Quaternary would encompass the Holocene and the Pleistocene. The beginning of the Quaternary is the Pleistocene, which if you listen to some of my older lectures, I'm giving the the uh, date of 1.6 million years for the beginning of the Quaternary. This is the Quaternary period. The period is subdivided into epochs. The Quaternary consists of two epochs, the Pleistocene and the Holocene. We're now in the Holocene and have been for 11,600 years, right? But the Quaternary, in my older lectures, I'm talking about it, it being dated at 1.6 million because this was, you know, 20 years ago, this was the, the duration that was accepted in, in the literature and in so on. However, new research has pushed, it, puts, pushed its age back by a million years. And what defines the Quaternary, I think, more than any other single thing, is the beginning of this oscillation between glacial interglacial ages. That's the thing that really characterizes the Quaternary and the Pleistocene. So you have Quaternary, which is the period. It's broken into two very asymmetrical epochs. The Pleistocene, which lasted from two and a half million years ago down to 11,000 years ago, and then the Holocene. So one of the legitimate questions is, is, are we really out of the ice ages? Are we into something completely different now? Um, because it's unusually question. stable. What's that? Because it's like unusually stable. But yeah, 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 the Holocene has been unusual. And, and as we have looked at the ice core graphs, I mean, that's clear to see there, the difference yes. between Quaternary and Holocene. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, so... so uh, the quaternary now has been pushed back to 2.6 million years, which I find to be interesting. Why, why is 2.6 million years interesting? That would be 2,600,000 years, right? 2.6 million. What happens if you divide that by 100? You get the processional cycle of 26,000 years. 1,000 years. So yeah. the quaternary, you could basically say, is 100 processional cycles almost precisely. Wow. And if, you know, going back to Hamlet's Mill that we talked about, you know, in some of the earlier episodes who define the, the, the archaic concept of the great year is primarily the, the, the processional cycle, the changing of the, the 26,000 year cycle of changing pole stars, the movement of the 26,000 year movement of the, of the equinoxes and the solstices through the plane of the ecliptic, right? 26,000 years. So that to me becomes a, a, a very useful mnemonic. You'd simply multiply that by 100 and now you've got the length of the quaternary. And this, this idea that something happened 100 great years ago, right? That caused a major shift from the extended warmth of the Pliocene into this glacial interglacial dance that's been going on ever since. So, yeah. Then you've got the possibility of a 26 million year cycle in the, uh, the, the, the extinction. Um, what did you see, my puppy? Yeah, yeah we, we saw, just saw, we the, saw tail. the flag. Oh, the tail. I <laughs> <laughs> heard the door open the and door then the flag went by. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, before our next episode, I'll go out and shoot these dogs so they don't interrupt us anymore. <laughs> No, no, those dogs. No, are no, I, I couldn't even. No, the, yeah. these are. I have wonderful dogs. Yes, they're very sweet. They're uh, good guardians, but extremely sweet. They're huge. Nice. Yeah, they're so, massive dogs. They're, and they're the track, kind of though. dogs. You, they're the kind of dogs you would want to have if you were living in the world with Pleistocene lions and giant <laughs> cave bears. Right. Great. Mm-hmm. Don't um, lose the track of the 26 million there, and then it'll, it'll go up one more scale, too, won't it? Well, then you got 260 million years. It's very close to the estimated time of a galactic rotation. 
Oh. So is there is this coincidence or are we looking at some kind of plan synch- synchrony here that links things by powers of 10? I don't know. Mm. I don't know the answer to that, but nonetheless, it, it, it's to me very interesting. That would see, and so this idea of this twenty six thousand year great year cycle becomes a, it becomes a useful tool, if you will, to help comprehend these larger cycles of change. And whether or not there's any coincidence there or not, I'm not com- claiming that there's anything other than coincidence. But then again, I don't know that synchrony, synchrony may have some root in some kind of harmonization of cycles on a cosmic level. So wait, the the rotation of the the galaxy is 10,000 processional cycles basically or is is that right because you got 100 at 2.6 million and then you said 260 million yeah uh one, one trip around the i think it's a thousand the galaxy, what did we say yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd be 10, 000. yeah ten thousand. yeah 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 ten thousand ten thousand great years yeah. it's starting to sound like a day yeah. of brahma. a day of brahma yeah what is that well Four, yeah and and, and you know which brings up not to digress into that, um, but certainly when we begin to look at some of these ancient traditions and we find these phenomenally long cycles of time, we're going, oh, wait, wait a second. Now, these guys are thinking terms that really are almost modern in the sense, you know, right. um, you know, the idea that the, that, that the world is, is four, you know, 432 uh, billion years old. Yeah. Which comes out strikingly close to the four hundred and Fifty uh, or uh, four point five billion, excuse me, four point three two billion years old, in the age of the Earth in in the in the Vedas, which is very close to the four point five billion estimate for, um, you know, science, yeah. exactly, exactly. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. And the four point three two billion years is one day of Brahma, isn't it? That's what that is. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's what that is. Yeah. yeah, and and then of course you've got since we're talking about the yugas, we'll throw this out there for a second. You know, you've got within that, that hierarchical scale, you've got, if you go and you look at the Sumerian king lists, the sum total of the 10 Sumerian kings is 432,000 years, the total number of reigns, right? And, and each one of the reigns as, as, as basically coming through the tradition and we'll, and we'll, we'll d- devote a, a, a segment to this. Um, you know, is, is one of these cosmic numbers that we've been talking about. One of these, the, I call them the Vedic numbers, you know, the, these numbers that recur over and over again that all uh, add up and reduce to nine, right? All these multiples of nine, right? Yeah. But if you look at them, they're, they're built on this um, uh, tenor, ternary scale, if you want to call it that, where it's pyramidal, right? And you've got the Kali Yuga, which is 432,000 years in the Vedas, which interestingly, so it's like, the Sumerian king lists talk about these ages that are measured in tens of thousands of years. They sum to 432,000. And right. then you get the Vedas, and it picks up the range from there, and yeah. it, it, it extends the range into hundreds of thousands of year cycles, right? It's almost as if the Sumerian king lists and the, the Vedic numbers are, are essentially part of this continuum. Yeah, a complete right? set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so you've got the Kali Yuga, which is 432,000 years. <clears throat> and then you've got the Dawapara Yuga, which is twice that, 864,000. <clears throat> and then you've got the Treta Yuga, which is three times that, or 1,296,000. And I'm sure at this moment, everybody listening is pulling out their calculators and checking my, my numbers here. But if you go three times 432,000, you get 1,296,000. Right, so now you have this trade you get to one million two hundred ninety six thousand years, right? Well, go ahead and divide that by fifty, and what do you get? You get, are, or are you doing it? I'll try it. All right, I'll, it's in your hands, Russ. Yeah, one million two hundred ninety six thousand years in the Treta Yuga cycle, which divided comes from thousands of years ago, the Vedic tradition. So divided by fifty, it's twenty five thousand nine hundred twenty, which is exactly. Right. Yeah, so they they have this recognized grand cycle of time that turns out to be fifty processional cycles. Is that yeah. coincidence? <laughs> I, you know, again, so that's half of the um, what were you were that's just half saying of the court, yeah, quaternary, the quaternary period. period. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. one half of the quaternary quaternary period, or is it the? Uh, the no, the that's right. One? Yeah, yeah, it's quaternary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's half the quaternary. Wow, exactly. It's half the quaternary. 
<clears throat> That's right. Mm -hmm. Because double that is you get the 20, uh, 20, the you know, yeah. What did I say? 25 million, 920,000. No, 2.5, 2.59 million. That's what we're trying to yeah. get to. Yeah. Which I'm rounding off to, to 2.6 million, which right. is the length of the quaternary.